All right, welcome back, everyone. It that wasn't too long of a wait, as uh, we're jumping immediately into the semifinals here. Once again, I'm Niz. You're watching Nizcast, and my co-caster tonight is going to be Indy Bear, who uh, we heard last game. Indy. Hey. And we've got Goofy on the stat as well. So, uh, yeah, well, it. Uh, we've got we've got an interesting game coming up here. Is uh, we've got a lot of friends of the stream. Uh, in this one, or at least on uh, on the radiant side, so uh, that'll that'll be interesting to see as we've we've seen so many of these players. Follow the Reaper. He's going to be the captain for uh, this is overachievers, but they're going by the radiant name of Low Hanging Fruit. Bad. We've got Brink. We've seen Brink in the in the chat so many so many times and casted so many of his games. Sulfu the Frenchie. He's uh, friends of of my co-casters and, and friend of mine. And uh, Tunerla and Ryan Noob as well, which we've casted a million of Ten their games, and also remaining. friends of. Of my co-casters and of mine. Five seconds. So uh, it, it'll be a good one. It'll it'll be a good one to watch at least. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it seems like they're quite a stacked team. I mean, they've played together in different iterations of that roster before, especially Reaper, uh, Salfu, and Ryan Noob, and then Nerla has been on some of those. And definitely, a, it's going to be a really fun game to watch. And of course, we got to experience. Uh, Epic Noble Wings gameplay as well. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited for this game. Yeah, he had a really standout game uh, last game on the Queen of Pain. But uh, I, w I was saying a little bit in lobby chat there that, you know, I said it in the cast, but I also I, I made a point to actually say it in the lobby chat that Cheesehead was always on point with his positioning on the Naga. So uh, s shout out to him as well. And frankly, everyone on Next Level Badass has played, played pretty good. You know, last, last Wolf maybe made a few mistakes early on in the game, dying a few times on the Lena. But... Uh, yeah, everyone, everyone seemingly played pretty well, so uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting Five to see how they're able to remain. square up against uh, overachievers here. Is I would be really Dyer surprised if one of these players on their team hadn't Radiant won an SCS. Team. I'm pretty sure all of them have, you know, maybe not together as they've all been in on different teams, but I'm pretty sure all of them have probably won an SCS team in, uh, in their career. So, uh, yeah, they're going up against a pretty formidable opponent here, and, wow, this draft has gone by quick. Yeah, both teams seem to be confident in they want to pick, and Lashrak yeah, actually gets through the pool, back. not something we get to see every day. And maybe uh, Low Hanging Fruit's just confident in their ability to play against it. Yeah, so the Shadow Fiend actually being the first band coming out from Next Level Badasses, so maybe a little bit of respect band Ten coming out against overachievers, because they certainly didn't open with that last game. But uh, it Five combined with their, their band of Lena, which they let through last game as well, freed up that Lesh Rack, so that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. And then they picked well, up the Clockwork as well. Dire team band. Yeah, Clock uh, pairs well against Lesh, and it's one of the better heroes against Lesh as well, so it's a great pick, but... Around the Shadow Fiend, it's pretty much since they're on the Dire side. And I think the other team that we saw last game, uh, Fallen, Ten they had, um, remaining. like, you don't want to get give the Radiant side SF ever, Five right? So remaining. pretty sure that it always gets fanned out on Dire. But next level badasses were on Dire last Reserve game. Time. I, I think it was fanned out. I'm not was entirely it? sure. Maybe I'm wrong. I, maybe I'm wrong. Because we did get a lot of Tier 1 heroes through. So maybe it was banned mm -hmm. last game. Yeah, hmm. but regardless, like, um, the Ember 3 at Less Track matchup, if they uh, do lane against each other, which it doesn't seem like they might anymore, is actually a matchup I've seen, um, like, Sumail and Arteezy talk about, where they do feel kind of confident playing that matchup. Uh, maybe the laning doesn't go so well, but they pick. certainly pick, the, pick their game up in the mid-game. So it'll be interesting to see that fare out as well. So we also see three typical supports as well for the Radiant side. Tusk, Earthshaker, and Dazzle. Looks like that's... Uh, which, which way are you leaning towards? Is that, is that an offlane Earthshaker or an offlane Tusk? I could I almost um, see both being viable here. Ten seconds. Really? Yeah, I, I mean, both could certainly work. I think it's just a little bit Five more standard to, to see the Tusk uh, sort of go in the offlane there, but... I mean, yeah, they, they have a lot of flexibility time. with that. And for next level badasses, you, you, you normally assume the Lesh Rack is going to be mid, but you also do the same with Storm. So it looks like it might be a safe lane Lesh Rack, or they may even put that on support, pairing it up with Witch Doctor. I, 
I think that's almost a little bit a little bit of a waste when you get when you finally get Leshrac through the bands. Yeah, I mean, definitely we saw a very similar situation at TI as well, where you, you kind of get Lesh and you're like, oh, well, okay, I have Lesh now, what am I supposed to do? But, um, yeah, we might see it go mid with the Storm safely. That could also be a thing, I guess. We're going to see Templar Assassin again going in the mid lane up against next level badasses. But uh, it's not going to be against the Queen of Pain unless they pick a Queen of Pain here, which I'd be very surprised. But I guess it's not out of the realm of possibility if the Lesh were support, but I think it's highly unlikely. And I think I think the Storm is actually... Uh, either either of those heroes Ten is going to do quite well remaining. mid against the TA. Um, I think Lesh... Five Lesh is probably remaining. more favored in that matchup. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure there, but Zone I think time. they'd both have a, a decent time. Maybe Storm might struggle a little bit, you're right. So they're they're gonna well they're gonna take some time here to really decide on their last pick. Hmm. I wonder if there is the possibility of not putting the TA mid and putting the Ember there and then TA safe lane. Perhaps, but it that's a lot more uh, uncommon to see. Um, well, the way I, I see it is you, what you could potentially do is put that TA safe lane and pair it with the Dazzle. And then have the Tusk offlane, and then the Earthshaker can move around. And if you put something like a Lesh or the Storm mid up against the Ember, one Fissure from the Earthshaker could be a dead hero. Both those heroes are pretty squishy and pretty weak pre-6. Well, not, I guess Lesh isn't pretty weak pre-6, but rel relatively squishy pre-6. Uh, right. I think there is some possibility there, and, and you'd be going up against the clock, so it's not like it's, it's the strongest hero for remaining. them to... I hear that's too strong for a Dazzle to be able to solo zone. Five seconds remaining. Mm -hmm. and you, I guess you'd assume the clock to be doing the Cogs block anyways. It's going to be an Enigma. Yeah, so pretty much uh, if Noble Wings on Lash, yeah, he'll probably be taking it mid. They'll have a safe lane Storm, I guess, and uh, Enigma jungling. And yeah, Clockwork off lane with Shock to support, so. Interesting to see an Enigma pick, hopefully doesn't get something like a Crimson Guard. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we always have a joke amongst ourselves about uh, the Crimson Guard pickup at TI on uh, the Enigma from Puppy. On the, on the poopy hero, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, why don't you and Indy start us off with uh, introducing our, our Radiant side here. All right, so we got uh, Team Low Hanging Fruit, also known as Overachievers from time to time. Uh, we got Fear the Reaper, he's going to be going by Just Reaper on uh, Ember Spirit. Brink, a big fan in his cast on the, the TA. Uh, Salfu on the Shrenth, uh Earth Shaker. Uh, Tunerla is going to be taking away the Tuscar. And finally, Ryan Noob, uh, who's actually an ex professional Halo player on uh, the Dazzle. A little bit of that insight there. But on the on our Dara side, we got the team that we watched last game. As uh, it's going to be the next level badasses, Noble Wings. He's going to be uh, controlling that Lesh Rack. We saw him do some work on the Queen of Pain last game. We'll see if he's going to be able to to live up to that this game as well. We've got Good Knight on the Storm Spirit, Lonely Boy on the Witch Doctor, Cheesehead who had incredible positioning last game on the Naga Siren. He's going to be playing the Enigma. So a little bit different kind of positioning that he's going to have to. Uh, um, show us this game, but uh, then we've got Last Wolf on the clockwork. Yep, and uh, hopefully Last Wolf can redeem himself and not die at the bottom rune this time. The battle seems begins. like he's going to be fine. Yeah, he took a little bit of damage there from the Reaper. But uh, it is going to be a bounty rune for both mid heroes, as it looks like we are going to have the Templar Assassin mid going up against the Leshrac. Um, but we've got a little bit of blocking come out from both supports, so we'll see if they uh, actually rotate away um, from the mid lane here, as I imagine they will. But uh, Lonely Boys, actually they might stick around. We're actually going to get an early Sentry Ward um, down, and that's just to block any kind of Observer Ward that would help give them a little bit of vision across the river. And they, they know that there's going to be an Observer Ward, and they're, uh, they're trying to, to ping it out and, and say where it could potentially be, but there actually isn't one. 
Mm -hmm. And it's always nice to have a sentry down uh, against the TA just in case uh, the Lash has an opening and uh, so the melt oh. doesn't prevent the kills. Fissure in the bottom lane. Last Wolf is trapped. He could be giving up first blood again. He's going to try to TP out. And I think he will be able to. He will. As he's actually going to go all the way back to Fountain with it. But uh, he got down to about 130 HP, I believe it was, before that TP went off. Of course, they had no way of disabling him to interrupt it. So good play there coming out from, uh, from him, making sure he doesn't give up that first blood as Lonely Boy. Taking a bunch of damage from Tunerla up in the top lane, but he's not going to be able to finish that off. As the the storm spirit comes in, well, that was like a, that was such a great play uh, by Last Wolf, recognizing that uh, the fissure is the only sun they have with the level one ember, not having uh, the searing chains, of course. Yeah, and uh, well played by him for sure. Yeah, it's one of those things where there's actually a lot of potential TP interrupters coming out from uh, from that lane, but they just don't have the levels to have them available. And now let's snowballing forward, getting a little bit more damage on this witch doctor. Monkey's mm -hmm. still picking away his thing, hair, though. Yeah, another thing to note is um, next level badasses didn't opt to block the Ancients this time, so uh, we might see Brink stacking that up, and of course, the a new thing that Templar Assassins started doing is farming up those Ancients with the Psyblades getting a lot of farm. And that, that has become so, so important for Pushed. Templar Assassins as well. Denied. Like, it's, it's huge. It's really, they really rely on it. Bottom lane. Cog's already getting used in the bottom lane. As Soulfu and Ryan Noob are coming in. Soulfu is actually hasted, oh. but it's running into the back of Ryan Noob. And once again, Last Wolf just going to TP away. The Fissure was actually off the mark, but the TP came out after it anyways. Yeah, I think even if the Fissure lands there, he probably gets the TP off. So, might need to hold on to that one because getting some deja vu from like two minutes earlier. Yeah, but once again, you know, good play coming out from the clockwork. Why not? Right, if you, if if they've got no way of uh, disabling you, why not just TP out? Actually, my, I think he may have been better off just TPing to the tier 1, because I think he missed some XP there. But uh, still right. not dying is, is, is the, the bigger one. Do it with flair. And that's actually creating so much space, because you have to realize that uh, next level badass is just having Enigma farming away at the jungle while well, both supports are tied up bottom lane uh, on the Radiant side, accomplishing almost nothing when they're failing these kills. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we expect the Dazzle to be down there, but that's two huge rotations from the Earthshaker. You know, early on, he's all about pressure, 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 and he hasn't been able to apply any in the mid lane. So we're actually... Looks like they don't even need it, as Brink's, Brink has been doing quite well, but he's in trouble now, as he's going to get stunned up, and it will be our first blood, as Noble Wings is going to be able to finish him off there with the Diabolic Edict. And that's actually a really weird, I, I shouldn't say weird, but interesting build on Noble Wings with the uh, Max Diabolic Edict. Something you rarely well, see in the mid lane. Is Nerva's going to get the first one on board for Out. Overachievers. I never pull my punches. Yeah, he gets them on the board, but yeah, I don't, I don't think we see that at all anymore. They pretty much opt for the Lightning Storm Max, mm -hmm. and yeah, maybe it's just the build he wanted to go against the TA to chew through refraction. Yeah, I think it's definitely seems to have working out. I think it's definitely about going against the TA and and more more particularly due to the refraction. And uh, we we saw you know Brink kind of he got in a bad situation there. He was doing a little bit of manning up, and then. He popped a fraction and it basically just went away immediately as Diabolic Edict Denied. just completely chewed through it. Wow, some yeah, pressure. So seems like he's. Okay. Nero is gonna dive seems with like tier one here. It's there. gonna be close. Okay. Oh my goodness, not able to finish him off. Blown away. That's that where uh, he has to just uh, say goodnight to him. <laughs> oh, go to no. sleep. <laughs> oh no, the pun. Alpha's mid lane. Is this going to be a kill for them? Oh, is it? Noble Wing's going to man up. Oh, he misses the stun this time. And uh, Brink's going to. Oh, he's got a fresh refraction. He'll be able to dive the tower. But. Oh, nice smoke coming out from Soul Food. That was actually incredibly important. It actually blocked uh, one of those tower hits. I think. Looked like it did. I don't know what actually would have disabled his smoke. The, maybe it might have been the tower there, but regardless, interesting stat to see there that 
the win rate actually drops when they're paired together rather than having uh, the higher 57 win rate on the Lesh. And that's, that's with the Lesh in the Storm? I, I that's also, correct, yeah. Unfortunately missed it, yeah. I guess it comes down to Lesh either being in a support role when that happens or the Storm gets moved to a role that's not his standard mid lane. And it's probably what happens when Radiance maybe some teams panic during the draft or things happen that are uncommon. This is certainly an interesting scenario, or an important one at least, as Enigma has hit six and they've smoked up, or at least the Dazzle and the Enigma have smoked up. They're going to look to try to get a kill in this mid lane on the Templar Assassin, but the Dazzle's here. I said Dazzle, I meant uh, which doctor that was smoked up. <laughs> well, Dazzle's there as well, so they're not that yep. far off. So, oh, they're going to try to go in here. Will they be able to catch Brink? They will with just the Black Hole. Ryan is just standing back. He doesn't have Shallow Grave. He's level four without Shallow Grave. And Brink is going to be in a whole lot of trouble, but he will survive. Wow. He'll be able to get Refraction back up. Noble Wing's looking for another kill. Actually missed. Follow the Reaper going in and clearing up. Getting a double of his own as he got those two support heroes that were diving in. Noble Wings gets the Diabolic Dedic off, but it's not going to be enough. As, uh, it's dealing a lot of damage to Rainu. Of course, it it uh, persists through death on the, on the ground surrounding the Leshrac. But yeah. really good rotation by Reaper, recognizing that um, he has a lot of strength in these early fights. He's yeah, going for another kill, actually. That's one of the things that we don't see too much from Chorus. Is that, oh, this one's getting closer than I expected. Is Reaper? He actually needs to be needs to be careful here. Oh, I was just checking to see if there was a a flare, but or how soon the flare was going to be up. But Soulfu's there with the fissure, and whew, that was that was maybe a little bit clo too close for comfort there for uh, for Reaper. But uh, the point I was trying to make is that uh, it's one of the things that you don't typically see too much from the safe lane carries participating in these fights so early on into the game. We're pre-10 minutes. We've got a flare flying in. Will it be able to find its target? No, it's going to be off the mark. I don't think it would have been enough anyways. This Reaper's up to 90 HP. And what is flare at? It's rank 2 flare. So 120. It would have been close it, for it, sure. I think it actually would have just been enough. If my, uh, if my math didn't fail me there. So a little bit of aggression getting applied onto the Leshrac, forcing out a TP from the Clockwork, and now Nerla will snowball in. It's a 3v2 here. They will punch the Leshrac up in the air and gets them the kill. Will they be able to get out now, though, as the Enigma has come back in to, uh, to help his teammates and try to potentially get them a revenge kill? Another Ice Shards comes through. Brink, oh no, he wants to back out, but his creeps are blocking him. Thankfully, this is a long TP for the Witch Doctor, so he'll be... Uh, He'll be really thankful of that. But next level badasses, they uh, unfortunately lose their Leshrac there, but I think they were actually... Uh, they were hoping to get a, a return kill, but I think they might have actually been lucky the fact that they got away with only losing one. Radiant yeah, definitely. Tower is under um, attack. There was a big rotation happening from both sides on mid, and to walk away with just one death is pretty fortunate for them. But uh, back to what you were saying earlier, actually, about the carries moving around is mm -hmm. something we saw at TI, uh, you know, especially th teams like C-Deck and you know, EG, the ones being very success successful. Yeah, Fear and it's uh, very aggressive with his carries. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really great to see that you know Reaper is sort of uh, following following that um, that play style. Uh, definitely, he's getting a lot of farm from last hits, but also he's picked up four kills already too. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he actually played pretty aggressive when he was in the mid lane, too. Because like, he used to play mid, and then he transitioned to carry, I believe, right? Yeah, I personally, I wouldn't remember that at all, but definitely he's playing really well this game, that's for sure. Yeah, that was that was a couple patches ago, so we're, we're kind of going back in time here. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we see next level badasses in a little bit of a different position this game than they were in last game. They, they, they were off to I wouldn't say a shaky start. They lost their, their Lena a few times last game early on, and they were they were a little bit behind. But when it all kind of shook shook down, they were actually ahead in terms of net worth. This time, I don't think it's going to be the case. They're down eight to two in terms of hero kills, and they definitely didn't start with Noble Wings at one and three. He was snowballing out of control on the Queen of Pain last game. 
So they're going to have to find a way to get this Leshrac going. This guy doesn't really have anything to his name right now. He does have 900 gold, but... Well, solo kill on the bottom is Reaper. Well, going to find a kill on the Clockwork. Toasty. And he has a regen rune to follow up, so he's going to be healthy for a while there still. But this this build on Noble Wings, it actually, uh, when you think about it, the TA tries to gank or tries to kill him, and he just puts Edict on and he has to run back. So it is working out well for him. If he can just get some farm, uh, might be able to do some work in the game. Now the other thing is... You know, if the TA just leaves, you can just take the tower so quickly to do that. Sulfur is going to go down here. It's good night and Lonely Boy will get the kill there, and that'll be great for Lonely Boy as he has been struggling hard on this Witch Doctor. He actually has no items. That's going to be enough for boots for him. And uh, they're actually going to find another kill, so a little bit more gold going the way of Lonely Boy. So he'll, get, he'll buy a set of boots and still have another 200 gold to his name. So uh, he'll buy a set of sentries, and he's back down to nothing. <laughs> Yeah. Life of a support. <laughs> Storms actually had somewhat of a quiet game, uh, other than the one kill that happened early game top. Haven't seen him participate much until that recent fight there, and he's going to be going for Orchid first, which uh, I think used to be the popular build, but most Storms now prefer to opt for the Bloodstone, so we'll see how his Orchid rush is going to work out. Yeah, well, they actually, they left him alone Radiant's quite a bit, going 1v1 attack. up against the Tusk, and Nerlo is doing some work on that Tusk, putting a lot of pressure on the Storm, and even when the Witch Doctor was up there, he was still able to apply that pressure, although he had to back out, but he was still, you know, he's still putting a lot of pressure on the Storm. We're going to have a, our first hook shot of the game, I believe, onto uh, Soulfu in the mid lane. They're going to land that kill, but Lost Wolf not going to be able to get on out of there. And unfortunately, it, it meant that Noble Wings had to commit a little bit further than he wanted. But once again, Reaper's there on the carry, showing up to these fights early on. And they're just, they're just outnumbering their opponents here. Yeah, Reaper's pretty much always there to fight, and... Uh, the Storm probably needs Radiance to join as well. Tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Well, according to that stat, we've got uh, the Storm going with uh, certainly a little bit of a different build, as Indy just pointed out as well. And I guess Orchid is, is going to be a little bit more valuable Radiance this game, considering you're going up against an Ember. Action. The mid lane is Brink's gonna get stunned up, so they will be able to bring down this TA. It cost them a lot, as uh, the Witch Doctor had to use the Death Ward as well. But, uh, you know, they were down 11 to 5 up until that kill, and uh, they'll definitely use a few ultimates to make sure that they get a single kill. As, uh, anything like that is just huge for them. She's had coming in, and he's. He does have support coming. They are a little bit further away. Now the hook shot. They seem really uncoordinated with this. Uh, engage here and it's just not going to work out for them but they will maybe just stick around in the bottom lane and put some pressure on this tier one ping coming out so noble wings definitely saying hey let's push this tower as he's actually going to rotate away pick up the bounty room but i imagine he'll come back down fissure trapping good knight and of course he can just bowl lightning away now all come the tps from overachievers three tps in fact they won't get the deny on the tower. The catapult will actually finish it off. They're going to try to find Cheesehead, who is TPing away. They won't be able to to, to interrupt him. Soulfu was starting to slam the totem. The totem? Totem? Yeah, I think totem. That's what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, the yeah. enchant totem. Right. Well, and, why um, am I doubting myself? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, I mean, the Storm's Orchid, like you were saying, it might work against the Ember, but attack. it kind of puts pressure on himself to make things happen. And if he's not, like, super successful, if he, had he just gone Bloodstone, he would have just been farming much faster and and actually action in the middle lane here. Yeah, some great coordination here from Nerla and Sulfu. But uh, it looks like it's not going to work out for them. Sulfu is going to get trapped in those cogs from Last Wolf jumping on him with the hook shot. Lonely Boy there once again as well with the Death Ward. Well, they might be able to re-engage here, but uh, Cheesehead is there. They do have the black hole, a nice black hole. 
as it'll only find one, but it'll definitely keep Noble Wings alive and allow them to get a kill instead, or will it? As Shallow Grave keeping Nerla alive long enough to get the punch off and dropping Noble Wings, so it is going to be a one for one trade. Oh, here comes Follow the Reapers. He's going to jump on in. As he gets the bull off on two, that'll allow them to get the kill on the cheese head. Really keep going for Lonely Boy, who is very, very low on mana. He does have the regeneration up. Whatever it's called, Voodoo Restoration, that's what it's called. <laughs> but uh, they'll think better of it and back away. Yeah, and actually Reaper being very proactive with his item build here. Recognizing the Orchid pickup uh, coming on the storm. And he's just rushing the Manta right away, so... Now the Orchid's actually going to be very uh, inefficient against the Radiant side, especially with Grave being up, and now there's a Manta on him as well. Seeing Brink going with almost the same build that we saw the TA go with last game. Um, just he added a Ring of Aquila in, but uh, he has just finished his Desolator. But uh, mm -hmm. it's a pretty big item for him so far. It means it's going to do a lot of damage. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Radiant's middle tower has fallen. That is one thing we didn't note in the, in the draft that um, Tenerla is actually attack. a phenomenal lurch shaker player. Uh, so, would have liked to see him on it, but I'm sure Salfu's taking his notes and learning from the best there. Salfu's actually been playing quite well in the earth shaker. I'd like to see him closer to blink. As we're sitting at 17 minutes, he's only level 6 and he's only sitting on 600 gold. He did upgrade his boots to Arcanes, but that's still Dyer's quite a ways away from, uh, from the kind of timing that we'd expect Dyer's in our Shaker to, to be approaching that blink, especially on the winning team, or at least the team that's leading, which I haven't actually brought up the gold graph yet, so we'll do that right now. There's about 2,500 gold going away of overachievers. XP is going fallen. to be about 6,000 gold in favor of them. Is under attack. As Reaper's gonna yeah. jump all the way back to his remnant, but Last Wolf is sitting there waiting. He just creates another one and jumps away to it. And now Last Wolf is sitting on no H or no mana and hookshot on cooldown, so he won't really be able to participate much for the next minute while that uh, refreshes. Top tier one going down to 30 HP. They will be able to finish that off. There is a TP coming in from the Witch Doctor. Sulfur gonna walk in, let the Echo fly, and almost gets the kill on the Noble Wings. They're not able to finish him off. Noble Wings. Does the Diabolic Edict, but misses his stun. Nerla trying to find a kill. Three more seconds before he's going to be able to punch. Going to sit in the snowball to wait it out. And, oh, he was already swinging. But uh, they managed to bring him down before he was able to get it off. Ryan Noob coming in, trying to finish it off, but he'll go down. Didn't even grave himself. There, Brink comes in. He gets the kill. Finally, Noble Wings goes down. But now Brink needs to make sure that he gets out of here. But Good Knight's gonna come jumping in, but here's Follow the Reaper. He's gonna get one. Is he gonna get two? Yes, he will. But they do lose. And, uh, they're gonna get the storm, and I think he's gonna get all four here. He's godlike. There he goes. He's, he's actually only gonna get a triple, but it was effectively four kills there. But Reaper being incredibly active. That's 10 is 0 and 3 on this Ember Spirit so far. And Reaper is actually in a similar position to what Noble Wings was last game, where he's just playing against a team with unreliable disables, and he has a hero that can snowball if uh, if he's not stopped. And you know, Lesh has a tough time uh, stunning down the Ember because you're playing against a hero with long cast anim animations to one that has none. Mm -hmm. And Witch Doctor, of course, doesn't bring anything, and the Orchid is mo moot because of the uh, Manta and. Pretty much all they have is the black hole. Yeah, and the problem is, is like even if you you're like, oh, you find a good opportunity to black hole and, and tie down that ember spirit, you have to always be mindful of where the earth shaker is. Earth shaker is so great at canceling black holes because you know once he gets his blink up, of course we don't have blink up on Sulfu yet, um, as he's sitting at 980 gold right now, but um, his positioning is generally that he's able to stand far enough away and Fissure has such a long cast cast range that uh, you're almost always able to interrupt the black hole. And we don't have a BKB yet for Enigma, just sitting on an Ogre Club. So, you know, that that's that's another pro uh, problem, right? They've got that one big lockdown to, to tie down Reaper and certainly they'd love um, to get that huge kill streak off of him or the gold from it. 
but uh, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to actually use that, uh, that black hole effectively. Yeah, and they also have the Grave on the Dazzle, and the Tusk has his own defensive abilities, and like picking up heroes in his snowball, so they've got plenty of ways to, to peel for him there, and the Dazzle's actually really rich this game. He, he's working on a pipe, he already has a hood picked up. Surprising to see actually Ryan Noob with all that farm. He's, I mean, he's been warding and doing all that, and he's actually quite a bit ahead of Soulfu. Mm -hmm. who's, who's been actually moving a around correction. a lot. Yeah. I do have a correction to make. Uh, Ryan Noob's actually still a current professional Halo player, and, I mean, yeah, we look at Dota as a big esport, but he's actually been really successful in Halo, picking up, what, like $40,000 in the, just the last year here, so he's definitely a very talented player, and bringing his talents to Dota is great to see as well. Yeah, we uh, we definitely played against him and his uh, his team a few times when we were we were together playing some competitive Dota. And uh, yeah, he was he was always definitely a very valuable asset to his team. Pretty much never holding his team down. Always kind of in the right spot. Always finding a way to find that extra little bit of farm. Um, that you know actually goes a long way, especially when you're talking about a, a, a player who's playing support. That extra little bit of farm is huge. Definitely. Think of how pivotal an item like Glimmer Cape, we're not seeing him pick up a Glimmer Cape this game, but an item like Glimmer Cape is, and, and just being able to get that a, a few minutes faster than the enemy support, given the same kind of opportunities, is, is ju just gigantic. Mm -hmm. It does come at a cost, though, where Salfu is still 20 minutes in and just about halfway to a blink dagger. So they definitely might want to get him some farm there. Uh, I think the problem is, is Salfu is actually sitting at 1, 4, and 2 right now. He's, he's just... He's, he's making good plays, but the problem is, is that he's going down early on in the fight. So he's not, he's not getting that assist goal that he needs. And that, that's... It's it's kind of difficult because there's always those opportunities where you want to step up and and press that R button and maybe smack it because it's Echo Slam and it feels like the harder you hit that button, the stronger your Echo Slam is. But <laughs> but um, you know sometimes you just have to stay stay back a little bit further in those fights to just kind of stay alive a little bit longer, just because that blink is going to make now. you so much stronger in the long run. Yeah, that's for sure. And I mean. This game is uh, like playing out just the way uh, the raiding team wants, and Storm not having a Bloodstone here and just the Orchid means that his farming speed is going to be much slower. And typically, like we even see Storms that are having a good game have both Bloodstone and Orchid by this time, or around this time. So he's definitely going to want to get that Bloodstone finished as soon as possible. Yeah, and Lonely Boy doing a ton of counter warding, not actually finding any. But uh, sometimes, you know, even if you don't find the ward, that's that's perfectly fine. Because you know there's no vision there. And that's that's almost just as valuable. You know, you'd like to Radiant's get a little bit of gold back on your sentry purchase attack. from getting the 50 gold from killing an observer ward. We're gonna have Nerla snowballing forward, gonna try to bring down Noble Wings. He's got more TP support coming in, but here's a hookshot support from some of Noble Wings teammates. His last wolf's gonna jump on in. We see Soulfu go down to start everything off. Now Nerla's gonna go down. He's actually gonna buy back immediately. Start TPing in. Ryan Noob forced to shallow grave himself, and Reaper comes jumping in. He gets one. He's gonna look for another. As Good Knight's gonna be his next target, he's gonna bring him down. Now 12 0 on this. Ember Spirit, and he doesn't get the next kill, but they managed to wipe out three. There you go. Ryan Noob's esports earnings. Yeah. Not Definitely bad. very Not successful bad. player there, and <laughs> I mean, it, that stat comes at a funny time because uh, Ryan Noob actually, that last fight, had two opportunities to grave his teammates and kind of fell short on both of them, and I think I saw some things. Coming out from Salfu, expecting <laughs> the grave, and uh, that's happened twice this game now. So, um, definitely good thing Reaper's having a good game here. 
Well, well Solfu did manage to get a, a good amount of gold in that bat last fight, and uh, he's actually able to buy his Blink Dagger now with them getting Roche. Just brought him up to enough, uh, enough gold there, so that'll be huge for them going into the next fight. But uh, yeah, we saw in the, in the chat Ryan Noob saying, my team's mad at me. <laughs> so definitely a couple graves that maybe could have gone off or should have gone off and just didn't happen. Well, he's almost got a pipe finished, so hopefully he can make up with uh, with the, some spell block there. Yeah, so the Aegis will go on Brink. And with his recent I, Blink Dagger pickup. What do you, uh, how do you feel about that though? I, I would have liked the Aegis to be on Ember, especially yeah. with his 12, 12 kill spree there. Yeah, I think it's definitely better on the TA when you just kind of compare the, like, think of who's going to be jumping in, who's going to be more vulnerable, certainly the TA. The problem is, is you've got a 12 kill streak on the Ember Spirit. And I, I think you, you, almost, you have to protect that with the Aegis. It's just so much gold going down, uh, going the other way if Reaper dies. You just have to protect that with the Aegis, even if it uh, if it means you play fallen. the team fight a little bit differently, because Brink can't be just as or as aggressive as maybe he he would be with an Aegis. Mm -hmm. He's actually looks like Reaper's actually going to go for a Battle Fury now. So he he went for the Man to protect himself against that early Orchid coming up from the storm. Then he got his boots to travel. Now he's actually going back for a Battle Fury, so he can do more damage in the team fights with uh, his. Slide of fist. I almost forgot the name of that ability. But we're seeing a little bit of a stalemate here in the in the in the mid lane, but Brink, he just jumps in regardless of not having uh or, or, well thankfully that he has the Aegis, he can just jump forward and do that. And uh, they managed to bring down Noble Wings. And uh, no buyback for the last track, twenty seconds before he'll be back up. They buy a little bit of time with the Glyph, and Brink jumps in once again. Nice Ice Shards coming out from Nerla, just barely doesn't trap. Um, good night in, so. Brink down to 300 HP, does still have the Aegis. He's also picked up a Chrysalis. We got a little bit more damage. Pipe getting finished by Ryan Noob there. Lots it's a big of item, actually. Yeah, the BKB on Enigma. There's actually nothing that's going to be able to stop him. Seems like from the BKB black hole. Yeah, we talked about how many ways they have of interrupting these black holes. And the problem is he's got no way of really jumping in, but he's going to come in from the side here. Will he be able to trap anyone? Snowball comes forward and traps Noble Wings, and now Cheesehead has been forced to pop his BKB, and he's not going to be able to get the black hole off, and it's going to be a PGG black hole. It's going to completely whiff. They do manage to bring down Brink. But Cheesehead maybe buying a little bit of space there, despite actually whiffing its black hole. And, oh no. There's so much damage coming out here. Soul Free will go down. Brink dropping quite low. They will get the pull off on him. Good night will get the kill. And now they're going to try to chase down Ryan Noob, who has already popped um, the pipe. And he's sitting on basically no mana. 100 mana, not able to use any of his abilities. He will be able to heal now. But the heal's not going to get him out of this situation. As uh, Last Wolf and Good Knight will combine for that kill. Reaper is getting out of there. He's now up to 13-0. So it's important that he didn't die. And But they did lose everyone else on his team. Yeah, they got a little bit oh, cocky there. And yeah, I mean, Salfu, yeah, he did. He still managed to get a decent blink timing there, so definitely great job by him. But yeah, Storm's one of the best heroes with buyback, just because he can immediately buy back and jump from the fountain, getting the ball lightning damage and the fountain regen as well. So excellent use of buyback there and picking up some kills. And that, that's the other value of, of the Bloodstone, too. Once you get some Bloodstone charges up, we don't see him actually having the Bloodstone yet this game. But once he has that up, it's it's almost like three lives in a, in a fight, right? You, you die the first time, and if you've got some Bloodstone charges, you're going to respawn quickly and jump right back in. And then if you die again, then you've that got uh, buyback to bring yourself right. back in a fight. It also gives you just more mana there to keep chasing after you buy back. And he's actually he's going to be all right. It's a long snowball, but they're not, certainly not going to find the storm. Sulfu blinking forward as well. They're going to try to find good night here.
Well, instead, they're actually going to find Lonely Boy, who is going to be in trouble. Uh-oh. Blink forward from Nerala. Ice Shard's not going to trap him in. But uh, they're not going to need it. His Brink does so much damage on this TA. Yeah, a lot of that physical damage coming out. And heroes like Storm and Lash, like, while they do build a lot of HP items, they don't get their armor items like Shiva's until much later on. So this is pretty much Brink's time to shine. There was actually a little bit of a, an interesting play there. And, you know, Noble nice Wings news. and... Uh, uh, I'm drawing a blank on, on the storm here. Uh, <laughs> good night. Um, good morning. Good night. <laughs> he, uh, both of them realized that the potential gank was coming. They both jumped out. Uh, Noble Wings TP'd away. Good night jumped away and then kind of ran down top lane. So they recognized the fact that there was some pressure coming up from the Radiant. Ooh, storm going down there. Um, Echo Slam getting used. Under attack. But they recognized the fact that there was some pressure coming from the Radiant side there. Uh, but then they just backed away. And then they also recognized the fact that, well, there's no way in hell. Uh, there's no way in hell that they're going to be able to chase us. So they're just going to give up. And maybe that was a little Dyer's bit of an aggressive play with the Witch attack. Doctor farming, given the fact that they had just lost control of their jungle. But I think they also realized that they were just going to kind of back away. But. Fissure gonna initiate here. Nice black hole will land on three, maybe even four, but it gets cancelled immediately. Not sure what even cancelled it. He forgot to BKB. Oh my goodness. He, I think he just forgot to use it there. It looked like a great black hole. And Ryan Noob is just getting spam pinged by Salfu. Actually by Brink as well. Yeah. <laughs> you might have to actually mute one of the players there. <laughs> well, they're gonna try to get a kill here on Last Wolf. Reaper getting kind Dyer's of low. Middle but barracks are under attack. Actually, not gonna finish off Last Wolf. They're gonna back away. They need to be careful because they can't really afford Reaper to, to give away a Dyer's 15 kill streak. They're still spamming Ryan Noob. I'm sorry about this, guys. <laughs> oh no, now Ryan Noob's gonna die. I don't know what's going on in their Skype break. Oh, but it can't be good. <laughs> I think it's just some friendly, friendly things. I, I don't know so if they're too, actually but... that so mad. <laughs> I think I think both both teams have uh, have choice words for some of their supports players. With Cheesehead not getting the BKB off before he black told, and uh, Ryan Noob not even being there. Ryan Noob has feelings. Stop it. Oh my God. Well, mm. according to our, our mini-map, we're casting a bunch of 12-year-olds. <laughs> yep. But Reaper is just keeping up with this farm and still hasn't died. He's been playing phenomenally. Yeah, he's at 17,000 net worth. And let's look at the lead his team has. Uh, about 15,000, just a little bit shy of that. XP, about 12,000 in favor of them as well. They actually... Pop a smoke there. It was it was Nerlo who actually popped it. That was a little bit weird. Maybe a little bit of a misclick. He was definitely in the middle of a, a whole bunch of enemies. But we surprisingly still haven't seen a Rax go down here. I think we're gonna soon see a push down this mid lane. We still don't have Black Hole available for another 60 seconds. So this is definitely a huge window for overachievers, but they are quite a bit ahead. They don't really have to force it. You know, Roche up in another minute and a half or so. Well, that's one way to start off a fight. A storm just gets punched to death by Nerala. Here's the grave coming out from Ryan Noob, keeping Nerala alive. Last Wolf had already hook shot in, used the cogs. And now we're going to have a snowball, buying him time, buying his team time to get in there. And they're actually just going to start right clicking down the racks. Nerala blinks away after snowballing. And uh, well, now he's going to get caught with the Yules, and looks like Noble Wings going to be able to finish him off. But the mid melee Rax goes down. We're also going to have Lonely Boy go down on the Witch Doctor. Range Rax going down as well. Still no Black Hole. Ten seconds away from it, and he doesn't have any mana. So Overachievers, get in, get the Rax, and get out. Well, I guess they got a couple kills too, but... Ooh, this is actually quite big. We do have the black hole back up. We're going to have the mana, and we also have a blink dagger just getting purchased as well. Soul food jumping forward. 
Oh no, we're not going to have any heroes left on the dire side to use with this black hole, as Noble Wings is going to go down as well. Cheese Head was almost there in time. Yeah, Salfu's had some really good plays on, the, on his uh, Earth Trigger this game, so. Yeah, especially really once happy he got to that see blink, him. too. Radiance top tower and Brink actually has three salves and a four staff on his TA. And uh, he did the classic Niz play where he salved himself in the middle of the fight. Oh my god, really, dude? Uh, middle tower I don't even. I don't even want to tell the stream what you're referencing. <laughs> I just, I just, top tower is just wanted attack. to die already. And it was a clear. Regardless, I could, it was yeah, a clear. They're having some self. fun. <laughs> Glad to see Radiant having some fun with the game, though. So it seems, at least. Dyer's middle tower Brink is just is toying attack. with the enemy team. Yeah, he's gonna get pulled here, though. They might be able to bring him down. Sulfur blinking forward, and Brink. We'll get the grave. Grave number two by Ryan Noob. Oh, come on. He's had more than that. <laughs> A hook shot's going to be off the mark. Brink is bringing down the Storm Spirit. There's the BKB and the Black Hole. And unfortunately, I guess there were two heroes in it, but they were in a snowball, so they couldn't attack him. Reaper now doing work. On this Ember Spirit, still has yet to die. He's gonna get. Oh, he actually doesn't get that kill. Sulfu gets it, but now he's gonna try to get one here. He's just gonna try to chase down Cheesehead. He's able to blink away, and oh, the bullets are actually gonna miss. And the TP's eight gonna be able to go off. But we've got. Uh, and Sulfu pretty... actually has to. Go ahead, sorry. I was just gonna say, we've had a pretty big dive here, and there's a lot of heroes on the Radiant side, quite low on HP. Thanks. Including Sulfu, who's. Very low. Well, he's opted for the classic 20 uh, clarity build. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a little BM. It's a little BM. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And yeah, you know they're they're kind of acknowledging that as well. Dyer's Back middle tower some, some BM has coming out here. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It's all in good fun, though, and... Yeah. Looks like next level badasses will start getting some kills. Ryan Noob will have to grave himself and TP away. It looks like we're not going to have any further action. We still only have one set of racks down. Tower is under attack. Ryan Noob jumps away, or Reaper jumps away. 16, 0, and 12. That's... That's a pretty good score. That's 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 pretty good. Brink. Well, he's gonna his score is gonna get a little bit worse. So he's he's gonna go down there. 14, 6, and 7 for him. I mean, if Reaper falls and like the storm gets his spree, it might be like a good 1,500 gold there. And I mean, you never know. They only have one Rax down. They're still a tier two up bottom. So. bottom tower is under attack. There might still be that 1% chance of coming back. Well, the trash talk continues. I mentioned a little bit of it in the, in the previous game that there was a bunch of trash talk in the, the IRC client. But, uh, it's extending a little bit into game here and... I don't know who we have waiting in the finals. I can actually probably check that in a second here. Rock it on! But uh, yeah, there's been a, a lot of trash talk going on, so... Just some classic NA Dota here. Yeah. Ha -ha! Yes! Well, it's actually going to be Clamshake crew uh, that's going to be waiting in the finals. And not the team that I was actually expecting. I saw a little bit of, um, God, I have to go look up their name, uh, Mugiwara Kaizoku, I felt like I pronounced that well, um, and they were playing quite well early on, but it looks like they lost, uh, lost in their other, in the other semi-final match. Well, it looks like this one's just kind of a matter of time, we're, we're just waiting for overachievers to finish this one out. These next level badasses, they're, they're still trying to Dyer's hold... Uh, top tower is under attack. Hold their high ground here. Do it with flare. <laughs> well, you know what? Cheesehead may say that, but we almost muted Sulfu as well. 
this game. <laughs> I actually had to end up muting him and um, him and Brink. And I actually already had Last Wolf, Lonely Boy, and Goodnight muted from oh my goodness. previous endeavors. Well, I, I don't have any of them muted, so I guess um. <laughs> oh, Cheesehead blinks in, we'll get a black hole on it too. Goodnight jumps in. I, are they gonna be able to bring anyone down? They're gonna bring down Brink. As I imagine the ping spam is gonna be coming out on Ryan Nuke, who's in the mid lane. Noah has gone down as well. Sofu jumps in, gets some good damage in, but isn't able to finish off the targets. They just get the one on Last Wolf, which is thanks to Reaper jumping in with a sleight of fist. He adds another kill to, uh, to his name. Noble Wings trying to bring him down, and I think he will. Oh, this is going to be a lot of gold. 1,500 yeah, gold. gold. Jeez. Oh, Ryan Noob comes in. We're going to have a buyback, and Reaper jumps back in. Going to try to get a little bit of that gold back. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. Ancient's um, actually dying mid. Comes jumping in. Noble Wings has gone down. Storm getting quite low. Reaper's quite Dyer's low as well. Ancient There's the grave coming out from Ryan Noob. Like you said, though, the Ancient's taking damage. Not sure how low it is. But Reaper will go down. He will be able to get the kill on the good knight before he goes down. Dire, your base. But Throne taking so much damage. Looks like they will be back in time to defend it. It's down to about a thousand HP. Rai Noob trying to, trying to distract them a little bit. The creep still working away at it. Down in 900 now. But they're not going to be able to finish it off. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> I don't even, I guess. I mean... I, it's mean to think that he purposely disconnected to... No, I don't to think. To flame. Oh no. Well, we do have an admin in here, so... <laughs> I mean, I guess there is a possibility that he, that he hopped out of the game and did hit the play button. God. I, I've actually crashed. I crashed before we hopped into the first game that we were going to cast. Um, actually, I crashed before that when I was just watching some other games prior to the cast. Then I cast when I was hopping into the lobby for the first game, and I crashed every single time we were hopping into each game. God, they need to fix that. Looks like they're gonna find a kill here on Ryan Noob. So a couple kills going the way of next level badasses. The score is actually not that far out. 43 to 33. I think regarding the play button, it's, it's a conspiracy set up by Valve to force everyone to play on the Reborn client. And they're just trying to... They set it up purposely. I think it, I think it might be specifically a conspiracy against overachievers. <laughs> so many times they had gotten so close to winning sex and, and fallen short. Of course, they they do have a couple wins under their belt. But. Well, they're gonna have. I mean, I, I was gonna say that they're gonna have a, a chance as they're gonna be advancing to the finals here. Uh, Nerla is hitting the throne. Yeah, Nerla is he's doing a little bit of backdooring. It's getting close. There's so much action in the mid lane as well. I'm gonna go actually jump back there. The Cheesehead's gonna jump on in. They've killed three heroes. We're gonna have a buyback from Salfu. Nearly going down. Oh, he gets the thrown so, so low. 215 HP. Oh my goodness. If Overachievers throws this, Salfu's the only one left alive. We're gonna have Reaper up in five seconds and we're gonna have Ryan Noob up as well. They'll be fine. Dyer doesn't have heroes that are good at sieging. Maybe the Lushes, but he's dead, so... Yeah. They have. They still have a couple throws, uh, and like team fights under their belt to throw. You know what? Reaper bought these Boots of Travel so they could be doing a little bit of farming, but also showing up to all these fights, and they're actually so Dyer's important right now. Because he could so attack. easily just jump on in to any kind of creep wave that gets pretty far progressed, and just go for that throne. I don't think we're going to see a super risky play like that. Certainly not before he has buyback and he's 1,300 gold away from that. If they really want, they can just hang out, get Roshan, and then push. But 
they seem to have so much fun that they might not go for it. Dyer's well, we'll have to smoke here from the Dyer. Roche is getting pinged out, and it seems like Dyer also knows what's up. It's important to note that the clockwork hasn't been smoked. Neither is the Leshrac. The other three heroes, though, are uh, leading the way. Good Knight has just revealed it, though. We drop an Observer Ward, but the Sentry Ward is within range. Uh, they do see a whole bunch of heroes rotating up through the mid lane, so Nerla's going to have to back away here. All this vision that the Radiant has set up means yes. that Storm can't go for those kind of places. It's actually crazy. Let me switch over to the Dire Vision, and, you know, they've got a little bit, but... It's all on their side of the map. It's very, very difficult for them to push out. Now Brink getting rid of a little bit of that, thanks to uh, that Sentry Ward that scouted out the Observer Ward earlier. Last Wolf, unfortunately, misses a hook shot. And without Aghanim Scepter, that's going to be down for a little bit. Only Boy does have his eggs. He actually added in the, the fight where they got wiped as well, the Radiant side. And yeah. He's been making some good plays with it. If, if Cheesehead is able to get a good black hole, and assuming he BKBs first, um, and then they're able to get that Death Ward off, oh my goodness, it's going to be so much damage. As there's um, there's quite a bit of Sentry Wards in, um, in the bottom rune location. <laughs> Yeah, they want to make sure that the Shadow Amulet on Witch Doctor doesn't, doesn't get them by surprise. You know, they're not going up against a Ricky this game, but you know, he always has a possibility of double this. But she said, we'll jump in. There's our Black Hole, as it's going to try to uh, tie down Brink, but he's already killed Roche. He already has the Aegis, and he's still going to get Shallow Grave. So we still haven't seen a single hero go down here. Brink will go down, actually dying to the Yule's damage. Now we've lost our Witch Doctor. Meanwhile, Ryan Noob's getting pressured. Looks like he's going to go down. But Noble Wings, he's the more important one for his team as he's going to go down to Brink. And meanwhile, the throne. Once again, Nail is up here. Smacking away of it. Just playing a little Ring Around the Rosie with Last Wolf here. <laughs> Slowing him with the sigil. Oh, <laughs> he's so helpless, but... There we go, the storm comes back and stops Nerla from this shenanig these shenanigans. And Nerla still keeps attacking it. It's only actually at 500 HP. Roger's gonna go down here as well, or will he? Yes, he will. Now Brink's going for it. Cancelling his attack. Oh my goodness, Brink, please. There we go. Finally, this game's over. <laughs> what a clowny game we just witnessed. Unreal. It's nice to have some some teams having fun, even if it's at the other team's expense. <laughs> yeah. But definitely enjoyable for us to to watch. But uh, yeah, if you're reading the if you're reading the in-game chat there, this is uh, Overachievers advancing to the finals. So uh, we're gonna have that game up in just a minute. The players might want a little bit of a break, but uh, we'll see. But uh, either way, we'll be casting it. So stick with us. Um, I am going to take a quick break myself. Once again, I'm Niz. You're watching NizCast. Make sure you follow me on all my uh, social media channels. All that stuff linked below this, the Twitch player. Um, besides that, make sure you follow my co-caster, IndieBear. He's at IndieBearDota on uh, Twitter. And uh, in he's got a Twitch channel as well, and that's twitch.tv slash IndieBear. And we also had uh, Goofy on the stats. He's at GoofGoofGG uh, on Twitter and uh, Goofy GG on Twitch. So make sure you give those guys a follow and support them and also support me. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna hop into the grand finals in just a minute here so hopefully you'll stick with us and uh, yeah don't go anywhere. <laughs> 